ideas, not necessarily about this place, but about the way that we think um, changes ought to be made. And as architects, that's something that we run into um, a lot of our project work. So really the purpose of this discussion, I would hope, is just to show you, it's not a show and tell, it's not like we've done one of those and three of those, because that really is not that relevant. It's more about how and why we do some of the things that we wait the way we do them. And the reason for that is, well, there's, there's a number of different reasons. We think we work in a relatively um, unique way, um, in the architectural profession, that is. Um, it doesn't necessarily make us any better or any different to any, well, this is different, but not any better than anybody else, because everyone has their own way. Um, the practice is about 12 years old now. I started it, and I started it at a time when I had, in my second iteration, I started teaching again at Bath University in the School of Architecture. The relevance of that is that a lot of the people that I work with now are from, not let's say just Bath, from other schools of architecture and who do... Um, teach in very much the same way that we work and so there is a kind of a debate within our profession about how you know the course is very long it's seven years and what have you and we come out the other end and we're purportedly qualified architects and we go on and trundle through life and things but never take much notice of what we learnt in those first seven years and that's something that we feel quite strongly is not the way that we should uh, one should operate so I for my part have now taught at Bath for 12 years. I mean, I ran the third year for five of those years part-time, which was um, quite hard work, but um, it involved and it introduced me particularly to the notion of writing briefs for things. So we were starting the process at a very obviously early stage. So I'm writing the brief for my students, design brief, um, which is actually, again, is, is quite a unique experience, but also deciding what in that year the ethos was to be, what we were actually trying to convey. And a lot of the way in which we dealt with um, designing was through workshops and through modelling and making and drawing and creating and through discussion and sharing as, as a group because inevitably in that university environment, the teaching environment, you have 90 or students, that's how you tend to work. And we very quickly realised that the benefits of doing that in practice, which we never kind of thought we were doing, but we were doing a little bit, but we, we very much then brought that back into practice and said, let's continue doing the same sort of thing. Let's work, use this workshop process, this design process, to, to make decisions about the things that we can do. And the real purpose of that is, at the end, is, is, is to work collaboratively. And I know that's a terribly overused term, but what it actually means in reality is to work in a group of, with a group of people that each have ideas and each can sort of offer something from which we can slowly, over a period of time, distill, those, distill from that those elements that are doable for one reason or another. So, I mean, these images kind of... I'm, I'm not... You know, I'm not talking to the image particularly, but I just kind of quite like that one. Um, uh, but these, these are sort of places we be, we travel with the students, um, we, we look at architecture, we look at places particularly, we look at how we represent them, we look at how we, we draw, uh, we look at how we model and make, um, we look at how we, as more modern, we draft and, and represent and um, we look at different scales. I mean, this is, this, for example, I will talk to the screen, is a tectonic project where the students are asked particularly to look at an aspect of their building design. And it's not just about the construction, about how things are made, and the materials they're going to use it is both those things, but it's also about how the relationship between different spaces within that model, within that building, within that proposal, influence the decisions that they then make about their construction and the materials that they choose. So materiality is a very important part of that um, experience, that process. And they, because they're pretty good techie, produce some fairly extraordinary images. This is a theatre that they designed in Barcelona. Uh, and we had towers and all sorts of things. This chap was, um, I sat on a train with him in Berlin and he produced an image in the top right hand corner with his fingertips and the paint that he had some paint he had in his pocket and I said Philip do you ever do this stuff? He said no I've done it for years. I said for now you've got to do it. So out of, yeah, out of, process, we, out of that discussion we, we kind of uncovered this 
budding artist who now makes a living doing that. He did his seven years in architecture and now paints buildings. But my point is that, that we all have different ways of expressing ourselves. And for some of us it is verbal, for some of it is to write, for some of it is to draw, to sculpt, to paint, to whatever it is. And some of what we want to do here with a cube over the next few days is actually maybe uncover some of those ways of, of communicating ideas. Um, so the discussion can be verbal, but the discussion can also be physical in the sense that we might choose, we might choose to make our card up, whatever it is, we might choose to model, we might choose to install, change something within the space that in some way or other maybe enables us to kind of uncover something, an aspect of this place that we hadn't previously um, appreciated. So we did, we also run, this is one of our programs called Studio in the Woods, which we actually now effectively sold. We ran it for about five or six years. And this program aimed at bringing, aimed at bringing practicing architects, students, and people within, kind of loosely within the profession, within the industry, to somewhere completely out of their comfort zone. So this one happened to be on the Isle of Wight. We've done them all over the country. And it is about, in small groups, working out how we might interpret a place. Now that can be a woodland setting, that can be a collection of buildings, can be something that then um, is represented through some means of making. So these, and these tended to be timber orientated, these sorts of workshops. But um, they were, this is one of, the, the, one of my favorites, which is at Kemerton, which is a sort of estate up in Gloucestershire. And, and this was a whole discussion about a particular nature of place on the, on the lake side and how one might um, kind of create this refuge from effectively found materials. I mean, all this timber was, was cut on the estate and we've, there's a chap by the name of Charlie Brentland, who's a master carpenter, who brought all his kit along and we saw, we took the bark off and sawed it out and made everything that we needed to make this object. And in a different kind of scale, that's the sort of stuff that we might hope we might be able to do here. Um, We've also done this sort of thing, the SW studio workshops, and the SW10 happens to be with schools, the year 10s. Um, and this is just a storyboard that we produced after doing one of those kind of things at actually John Cabot Academy in Bristol. And for them, we set up a kind of a model that talked about a process of discovery, interpretation, representation of ideas, and then presentation of ideas. And so there was a series of things, and you know we might try to kind of model our discussions over the next few days around that sort of storyboard, if you like. And that particularly, um, I have to say, had no agenda. And what I most enjoy about studio workshops with the schools is we deliberately go in. We go in with no agenda because we don't know what they want to do. But we have a process and a means of actually kind of extracting ideas and understanding where priorities of the pupils actually lie and some of the things that come out of those discussions are quite extraordinary and I almost inevitably say to head teachers afterwards or, or staff I say you really ought to be a part of this process because what we've learned from these young people who, who actually really live in this place and really use this school are quite extraordinary. So some great ideas came out of that and, and they start as very simple ideas and maybe we will do this and we'll just start marking up and recording on post-it pads or whatever it is, our ideas about this particular place and where our priorities lie. And I notice that you've got something along those lines next to your table in the staff space where people have written some of the things that they're interested in uh, seeing change perhaps or some of the things that might be uh, more or less successful. So. Um, again, it's, it, and it is important, I think, that there is an element of it that is about, um, I'll stop on that for a moment, that is about actually, if you're able to kind of to draw or to make a mark or to pe write a piece of text or to colour or make or model or something like that, because that is a means of giving some kind of semi-permanent expression to an opinion. And what, one of the things that we are thinking about doing, we'll try it tomorrow, is, um, given where we are, is to actually try and create a storyboard and maybe use the bottom corridor and just roll out something, stick it to the wall, where we can actually inevitably start the left-hand end and say, today we thought about these things, and these are some of the ideas that came out of discussions, and maybe this you know, is a photograph of a model that we made, or something like that, so that other volunteers and other people interested can kind of pick up the story, hopefully, you know, Thursday evening, and say, oh, I can see what they did, and I see what they thought about that, and I can see how, where they got to with that, you know. So we've got some kind of uh, record of doing that. I, I put this in only because it's another sort of sort of little story. This is um, a, this is again was a studio workshop we did with um, you know, six years little children about this big and um, what came out of it and I say I go in with no agenda we went in 
um, the, the head teacher said that we want to sort of think about the landscape and the spaces around us, all the place spaces and life. And I said, well, any particular reason? They said, no, it's just all a bit of a jumble at the moment. And, and actually what came out of it was a series of little objects that the children decided the sorts of things they wanted to do. And on the second day, um, the head teacher said to me, well, actually, we had a young person who died of leukemia about a year ago who was mad on butterflies, hence the previous image. If you could model that agenda to produce something that in some way represented that interest, that would be extraordinary. And with the children, they did. We did. We produced this, this object within the grounds of this school. That about six months later, the head came back and said, we've raised the money, 12,000 quid, to build this. And I was stunned because I thought the job or well, the project had, had, had disappeared. And the children you see in the background were the ones that designed this object effectively as this butterfly hide, which is... Um, this skewy thing that you can climb up the inside walls that was sort of clad so you can you know, so you can sort of peep through and you kind of hide in the middle and there are certain parts that we, we're growing around the outside of it and we put a muddy pond in and things like that and it has a narrow end that only little people can get into and these are all the ideas that these youngsters came up with to create this object that is quite you know I mean it's architectural in a sense but it's it's, it, it's it's turned into this sort of outside learning space. And in fact, last time I was at school, there were 20 few, 22 children, and it's only about a quarter the size of the stage, um, in there with a maths lesson, you know, measuring angles and things like that. So this kind of fantastic object came out of, of that process and was completely not of our making, which is the most important thing. Uh, I mean, we can come to all of these things with ideas, oh, you've got to bomb that and do this and pull that out and do that, but that's, you know, one day we'll perhaps go away again and do another job somewhere else, but it's you guys that are going to sort of live with it, if you like, so it's actually got to come from you. Um, and so we've now actually, this is a slightly older photograph, and now it's all decked out, we put our muddy pond in and grown some plants, and, and there are butterflies there, and quite a few, in a sort of a tired corner of the school, site. Um, we did a workshop with Cologne Primary School. They were given 5,000 quid from Wiltshire County Council to, 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 to set up a green transportation plan and they said well how are we going to best do that and encourage the children to cycle and so again we did a series of workshops from which came this object which is basically their bicycle racks which is now packed out and we ran up with fellows who, from whom we bought zinc in the past for some of our buildings and said have you got any left over and we knew how much we could get hold of and that's what we did so we got a zinc roof and they they modeled and made that object and then built it um, here's actually a different group within the same school then going on to design their new dining hall. So we said, okay, what's a dining hall? Like, oh, it's got to be one of these and three of those. It's got to be this big. And it was then that was made, the work were as Charlie, making those, those decisions were actually making the models and were actually involved in producing this object um, and these reverse bowstring trusses, which the kids actually again on site built themselves. So they, you know, there was a certain amount of stuff that they, they, could, they could do, the people that actually designed it could do. Um, and then another one which some of you might be familiar with, the hair class school, which is a pretty tough part of Bristol, I'd say. Um, room 13, this is, this is an art classroom that we did, um, and this came out of a discussion with the head teacher who... The Room 13 model came from, I think, Scandinavia, and this was the first one that was done in this country. And they're basically, they're art spaces that are uh, populated only by the little people. There's no adults allowed into the building. Um, and they have a little management group, if you like, or committee that run it, decide who can be a part of it, decide what art, kind of art they want to study. They have resident monthly rotating resident artists who come in and teach them about one particular aspect or another. And the school had a sum of money, I think it's about 180,000, something like that, and they were going to put up two porter cabins, two temporary buildings, in my view, temporary. And we said, before you do that, let's see what we can do that might work a little more effectively for the young people that were going to actually populate that space. And so with that same group of youngsters, we started producing ideas for what something that actually felt at the time, initially, I had to admit, quite scattered. But they said, we wanted this tall space because we want to do sculptures and we want to hang things. And, we, and, they, and they kind of distorted this internal environment to, to create the sorts of spaces that they wanted. 
And we said, well, we, we can do all of those things. We can have you know, um, these, these tall roof lights, so you can do all this, that, that sort of stuff. We, we knew that we couldn't have windows because the place would just get broken into because it has to be as I say, a slightly changed part of the world. I mean, there is a window in that bottom right-hand corner which is grilled. Um, and um, it is, well, it's got windows on the other side, in fact, on the school side. And it was built for the same price as the two porter cabins, and it was built uh, for about 180 grand, and it won an RIBA sustainability, it's got ground source heat pump and all that sort of stuff. So it is actually just, um, uh, you know, it's their space, basically. And, and working with them, they created it, and it's all it's polished concrete floor, and it's just it's it's just polished plaster in there, and big um, sort of um, um, OSP, which is um, skirting boards and things. So it's kind of bulletproof, and the whole idea uh, for them, they said in this space, they said they, we want to paint on the walls, we want to paint the floor. And that that was I should get some more photographs actually, because that was taken shortly after it opened, and it um, is now got the paint all over the walls, and it is used in the way that art studios should be, and there is sculpture and stuff going on in there, which has you know moved that that group of youngsters and hopefully future generations to a, a different sort of place. But importantly, it was of their making, and and that is a kind of an ethos, if you like, that. Um, we are quite keen on. I kind of threw this in for reasons I'm not quite sure about, except that um, you know the materiality thing is, is something that is quite important. The things that you make things from, and you saw from the earlier Studio in the Woods stuff that a lot of the work we do is in timber. Um, and this, this building was a, is a boarding house for a school in Bristol that we did, and it was a massive building, and, and we, it was a nice old place or something like that. But nonetheless, we still had quite a lot of fun working with those elevations to make it something that is, is not just about the timber, it's about there was a strong sustainability agenda about having a building that in my view is what I call an intelligent building, in other words it doesn't consume the energy so we don't need to replace it, um, but it does use uh, an unfinished um, Siberian larch, slow grown Siberian larch on the outside. Uh, we did research with the Timber Research Development Association because we, we didn't want horrible little aluminium flashings or you know, caps on the top of the walls and things like that. We wanted something that was very simple um, and because it was about you know, end, end grain of timber facing the sky and things like that. And would it rot? And no, it doesn't. Um, and, and careful... Yeah, uh, careful thought about the way that the window openings and perforations were made through the skin, about solar control, um, and about a level of in interest and composition within that um, building facade that um, gave interest to the whole and what otherwise would be quite a, a significant sized object. Um, in a funny, was well, sort of sticking on the kind of materiality um, thing, I really like this building. This is a, a, actually, a, it's not really what it is particularly, it's, it's a, a library at another school. But this is what I call scruffy brickwork, and this is was deliberately scruffy, much to the dismay of um, uh, certain members of the maintenance staff at that school. <laughs> <laughs> and and you can see the ones that poke out. The bricks that poke out are what we historically would have been called clinker bricks, and in the old. Um, um, coal-fired uh, brick kilns, which are very few, I think there's one in Essex now. Um, the clinker bricks were the ones at the bottom were overheated and they twisted. They were structurally just as good as any other brick in the kiln, but no one ever built with them, so the clinkers were always discarded. So we said we want clinker bricks because we want a texture to this facade, and it looks it's a bit exaggerated with that light on there, that in some way or other starts to work with the Victorian buildings alongside and you can see, and I happen to know from the grain of this building that, um, and I looked at the history of it, I found that the stone that was quarried to build those in 1852, I think it was, uh, became exhausted as they got to the tops of grain narrows and the, and the stone was of a lower quality. So we knew we weren't, weren't going to be building, we didn't want to build in stone, we wanted to build in, in brick. And so we did scruffy brickwork, and that's a lime mortar on there. And the lovely thing about lime is it self anneals, so that you don't need expansion jumps. So in other words, if the building settles, because buildings move all the time with the seasons, they kind of breathe, expand, and they breathe in and out. And, and lime, uh, as, as we knew hundreds of years ago, and simply ignored in adding, doing everything in cement these days, um, um, it can move with the building as well, and so it kind of does self anneal. And we had to get the guys from the brick manufacturers to make us clinkers because these days everything is so mechanical, so clean, so well processed that every brick comes out identical and the notion of a clinker brick doesn't exist anymore. So we actually had them take them off the production line and hit them with a hammer 
and we have hundreds of uh, samples in our office with it, and I said, now hit it harder. <laughs> we at soft clay, we do no, we hit it harder again. So these are kind of man-made clinkers, and it's kind of a little bit of cheating. But it, it resulted in a building that I think sit, sat within its context uh, fairly, fairly comfortably. And, um, you know, so, so that sort of, that kind of setting, that, that in, in affecting change within a place that actually does positively respond to where it is as an important part of architecture as much as place making. Um, and I don't know if we need to talk too much about this, but I, I, I put this in because it, it's north lit, it's naturally ventilated, and again it's another what I call intelligent building, so it does things that don't, it's, it's a big building, it's a big library, it has um, classrooms, it's got four classrooms, big ICT classrooms, and it all runs off a domestic boiler that is the size of that speaker. Um, when the guys fitted it, I said, that can't be right. You know, we, you know, there's no way you can heat. And the engineer said, yeah, absolutely is. And we over-insulated the walls and the roof and everything like that. And people can open windows, unusual these days, and, and press buttons to make the, the roof lights open and things like that. So people can control this, this building and make it as hot as cold as they like. You see a window open in the corner there. And there's a big bay at the end there, which is floor to ceiling, which you, know, she, she gives, you, know, you can sit in the bay and look at views across um, the playing fields and things like that. But importantly, it's not a building that consumes energy. It's one that actually sits there as a user-controlled, um, <coughs> um, efficient object, if you like. Um, this is just, if, again, we're kind of on this timber theme, really, and I don't, don't know that it's necessarily well, my final development here, I don't know. And this is just different ways of using materials. And this, again, is, this happens to be a music school, and that happens to be a recycle room at the end there, which is a big box. So how do you put a big box in a place that isn't used to seeing big boxes? Um, and I, this is what I did think of the cube when I thought about this space. Um, and, you know, we've got these, these solar control louvers on it and things like that. Um, and uh, we, on this one, used... Uh, we call it the cheese grater, it's our version of, and it is, it is a, an, it's an oversized expanded metal lath that actually when you look at it from a distance it does present as this kind of silver box and there's this cut out of the corner curtained on that image to, to get natural light into the space. We were talking about natural light earlier on in this, this building and how interesting it is. I, I mean, there's a few theatres that I've done, we're always trying to get natural light into it, or the opportunity to, so you can do blackout or you can actually see what's happening in the world outside. Um, and these sorts of buildings are of um, equivalent need, if you like. So, again, so we're just using different materials in, in non-familiar ways. I don't know why anyone produced this kind of expanded metal lath, but they do, but it's not been used as a cladding uh, material before, but it does look quite um, extraordinary. Um, this is, uh, looks like a collection of buildings, it kind of is. Um, this is in Walcott Street in... Uh, Bath um, and for uh, and the, you know, there's kind of there's a few. This is one of the trickiest jobs we've done in recent years uh, because this, in our view, was very much about place making. It was a very much about appropriate use of materials, appropriate ways of making objects, if you like, small buildings on what was a very tight old stone yard um, on the river. There's the the, the Avon coming down the right hand side. Walcott Street runs down the left hand side there. <laughs> Um, you've got the back of the Paragon up on the hill there, uh, which are the Georgian houses. But um, we argued that uh, because the Romans settled, and this sounds like a bizarre story, as they did 2,000 years ago at Cleveland Bridge, which is about half a mile up the screen, because it was the most important river crossing um, in, the, in the area at the time, and because Bath, as a walled city at the time, was half a mile in this direction, we've proved that this space between was, as it's called kind of for the purpose of the tourists these days, it was an artisan. Um, so things were made between those two places. You know, the fish were caught, the cows were grown, the weapons were forged along this piece of the river. And, had, and for, for thousands, well, not quite thousands of years, but for, for quite some time. And so to gentrify this, fundamentally, the argument was, well, if you just make it look like one of the Georgian houses on the hill, we'll give you a planning permission. And we said, absolutely, you can't do that. That's just completely not what this place is about. And you need to recognize that. And we, this is a model. This is a computer model that we've produced. Um, this building is fragmented into these parts, not least because there's a Wessex water main that goes through the middle, you can't build over. There are views from the top of the city through to the river, very particular views. There was a, these are houses on the river here with these splayed bays that again retain privacy to other parts of the, 
you know, of the, the environment, if you like, and, and set views up and down the street. This is um, a therapy centre underneath, and it's a martial arts dojo, as it happens, on the top. And it's built now, and that's the river view. And it is, you know, you, you take, and it's, it's the dark cladding is what the, the planning of, and the zinc roofs is what they kind of struggle with. But if you know anything about the people in Bath, then that is something you're going to come across quite often. <laughs> if it looked like what was in the distance, they would be happy as Larry. And I go, why? Why would I build something that looks like 350 years old? Just completely escapes me in the 21st century. You know, um, it just doesn't work. So, so these, this was, it was, it took two years to get planning permission, a huge number of arguments, a massive number of people um, are sort of literally marching up and down the street with placards saying, can't happen. And then we finished it, and, and, the, and when we finished it, the, the, the chap I know, actually know, now I know quite well, who organised all of those riots, almost, came on. <laughs> yeah, right. So it is, you know, it is something that, again, is about the materials we use, it's about the place that the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, the changes, the changes that are being made. If we did something a hundred yards down the road, it wouldn't look like this. It wouldn't do the things that this building does because this is of this place and very much of its use and specific to its history, its location, its use, and those things. And I think that you know here is 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 more probably is more important than ever. I mean, it's such a fantastic part of Bristol here. So you know, there's so much material to draw from um, and those are the kind of spaces that were were created that's the dojo um, martial arts dojo which are extraordinary in a sense um, yeah one of my favorite pictures again one of our studio in the, in the woods installations and one that i leave on the screen and it is and it is about just to, to sort of reiterate the message about collaboration really and working as a group and you know, and I think what we can do here, and we'll see in the next few days, is is potentially something quite extraordinary. I don't, Anya, and I don't come with an agenda. We actually don't know. We kind of know what you want to do. We just sort of broadly know the things you want to try and achieve from it, but we're not pushing in one direction or another. And we're kind of hoping that the input we get from you and whoever else is sort of moves through the building whilst we're here. Is, is going to be as positive as it can be, and there will be casualties, there will be things you want, you really want, that no one else does, there will be things that you really feel must happen, that maybe two or three others do, and we'll kind of collectively record all of those experiences and those thoughts, and see if we can't find a route through to almost affecting a change that starts to address some of those issues, but it is about the collective mind rather than the individual, and I think that um, you know, we're starting tomorrow with our, our first workshops and it's an open event you know, for the volunteers and so anybody that is here, very welcome, we're here for 10 o'clock. But our first sessions won't involve drawing and writing things like that, they'll probably just involve experiencing the place and talking about the place and finding a means of recording that. Um, I talked about the storyboard, we might try and make a film as well. If we can, <laughs> we're going to record everything through video and camera and stuff like that, and I think it would be great. And your chap is coming in on Thursday night. I've already got a few questions for him because I've been looking at my Adobe software and thinking I haven't used that for a long time. I'm not quite sure how that works, but you know, there might be things that we can do that again will kind of record that journey. And this is a start, well, it's a continuation of a journey because you know, you've made extraordinary changes in the last whatever it's been 10 or 15 years and I think it is a continuation of the journey that you know we will have an input in and 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 as in enabling your ideas I hope um, but the ideas and the changes will come from you and you know and we could just support that if you like with the experience of having done this and similar things um, elsewhere and every time you do it it's new and every time you do it it's different and that's the main reason that I say Every time we do it, we come with an empty mind and no agenda and an open book, really. So it's, it's a great opportunity. You know, we could march in and say, take that off, move that down and then solve it, but it won't. We might solve it for that side of the room, but not that side of the room, you know. You just don't know. But it's, it's about understanding the things that are valuable to you in this place and understanding how the changes that we make can retain what is valuable and make the rest of the object work more effectively. Questions, thoughts, conversations, ideas, things you'd like to go back and look at again, whatever you want to do. How about?
It's a great place. I'll tell you what makes a big difference, and we've noticed it during the course of the day, is the light. Changing the lighting in here, that is probably the most effective lighting you can have in this room. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've been walking around with like work, your workman's lamps, where it kind of like blinds you. Yeah. So I think, oh my God, you just see everything kind of really for, yeah. not necessarily what it is, but what it could be. But yeah. it's just, you see too much, but you need to do something. But it is, you know, it is an extraordinary place. And it is, um, Because it's weird to think that in here, you know, that the space would have had that lantern. Yeah, that's would right. Have been, would have been yeah. a light. Yeah. And it pouring down the whole room and, and that, uh, the, the roof kind of cuts into that. Well, we were trying to work out what your set are. I mean, you want to suspend it in the floor there and what happens yeah. underneath that? There yeah. must be a void somewhere. And actually, this relationship here. And a lot of what we've done today, instead, we've been here today just kind of measuring and photographing, recording and things like that, just so we've got some sense, or some greater sense, I should say, for actually what is happening here. So when you start to generate ideas and say, well, we want to knock that down, lift that up, da, 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 we can sort of gently come, hopefully make them work, or have some sense for the, the, the kind of viability of some of those things. But it is interesting, and, you know, and we, we have got moderately comprehensive drawings that have been done in the past, but it is always interesting for us to go, actually, you know, to go around with the tape measure, quite honestly, to know that how you know, big things are, because it makes you poke around, it makes you look behind the different layers, it makes you kind of stick your head up in spaces and, and find things that you wouldn't otherwise have done. So kind of make no assumptions, you know, it, it's, um, it is, uh, it's, it's quite an interesting challenge. So who's, got, who's likely to be around tomorrow? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be here in the evening as well? Because some of us work all day, so we can't. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. But we can't really do the modelling sessions effectively in the evenings because we've got something on every night. Yeah, problems. So we've got the those scheduled for daytimes, but they're going to be volunteering in the evenings, so they'll be here. But the modelling bit of it is a part of it. You know, is is not so small part, it's a significant part of it. But it's something, again, I say we, we would want to try and record in a way that we can share through, through the storyboard and through other you know, stuff that's going to be around, things are going to be talked about. But yeah, the idea is that we are around so that we can carry on that conversation. And, and it's quite interesting, actually, that people do come and go, and it's quite a challenge to find a way of, of, of gathering those views for the time that you are here and, and understanding where priorities and thoughts And that's why the storyboard is so important, really, so that contributions of any kind are just ideal really whatever time you arrive or have to go you can just kind of contribute opinions and writing ideas sketches drawings whatever and that's yeah. all beneficial really and, yeah. and absorb what's there to, to see how far we've got and how your ideas can draw in really because it is quite hard for me something that's been going on so hopefully the storyboard kind of enables that for you to catch yeah. up I think, I, I can't remember the name of, I think for me what's kind of interesting is that I'm kind of used to the cube and all its spaces being used for what they're currently being used for and thinking about it for the first time you start thinking maybe the spaces that we use for this and that could be used for entirely different purposes and there have been events where we've People, not me, because I, I, I just volunteered on those nights, I didn't organise them, but people organised having different events going on where you wouldn't normally expect them. Like, like you did a play in the void, I think, or something. <laughs> so, you know, so that... I mean, the void is, good, is, is the space. The, we the, call, the, the bit the you called the void is called the void. Oh, underneath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... I just think it's really nice to start I think that, thinking. Well, that, that is, that's a great experience, though, trying different how you use it. Because actually, at the end of the day, you know, the, the, the space becomes a place when it's occupied and, and used, isn't it? I mean, it, it serves no purpose and has no kind of interest unless you put people in it. Mm. As soon as you do, then it becomes something different. And, you know, I'm quite keen, for the, certainly for tomorrow, our early ideas are slightly scattered. You know, when we t when I talk to at the university, we talk about just we talk about going wide. We talk, let's just think out of the box, whatever we like to call it. We talk about going wide, and then there comes and then you kind of distill. And the, and, the, and the best buildings, the best architecture comes from is are, are quite often the simplest things. But actually, the level of thought goes way beyond what is actually 
realise in the end, but it's, it all informs what you actually do realise. So you might make one simple change, but that change can be extraordinary. It can allow you to do things in a very different way. Um, so you might, you know, I don't know, I don't want to preempt anything, but, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we cut, you inevitably have ideas when you walk around. You don't think, what if we did that then, put those over there, and turn this on its head and did those sorts of things. But, you know, that we're two of 20, 30 people, 40 people, however many might be involved in this. So I think if, if those experiences are worth, are worth us knowing about and worth sharing, and how you felt that worked, rather than having to play down there or showing a film in the loose or whatever else it is, you know. Mm. Um, because that is part of what this place is about. It is really interesting, actually, and I'm not feeling it. It's really interesting. You can be in, we, it just amused me earlier on that we actually felt like, we, not that we needed to leave, but actually walking out and it was dark and raining, having been in here. Well, we actually, we did escape for lunch, didn't we? Mm. Um, yeah, a good part of the day. Um, in how you can get subsumed into something quite, you know, certainly quite unique and actually lose track of time, lose track of what is happening in the outside world, which is kind of what this whole, the whole you know, this cinema and theatre is about, isn't it? It is about this kind of detachment from reality. And so there is a, there's a delightful detachment from reality. And, in the cube as it is at the moment. I quite like there's no natural light. Yeah, that's right. That's Be right. Because of that. There is a sense that... There is, yeah. there is light, it's just not in here. Not mm. in the yeah. 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 The spaces are Barely any. Light. Probably would be quite hard to get it into those spaces in some way. So when the spaces like the mound, but there is light, but, you know, <laughs> those rooms have got potential in what we could do with them, you know. Yeah. Whereas I think we know that in something like here, we're not going to... Not, they're not windows in the side here, you know. Yeah, celebrated darkness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of a black box. Yeah. Some part of it is always going to be a black box. But then, but then we did talk about it about, about having access to the, the lantern, so yeah. we could have it some kind of yeah. glazing up here. So, so everything's everything changing. So but I'm sort of where it sits, where the cube sits, and the buildings that surround it, yeah, not least King Square and everything like that, and the history of the connection, and, mm. and the garage at the top and everything like that are extraordinary as well mm -hmm. I mean that is what makes it I mean all of those things I mean you're kind of your sight I always think is you kind of start here but it's actually almost a half a mile in each direction uh, of where the influences are on the things that you might mm. you know affect some kind of change it's fun seeing the whole length of the building from you stand at the part of the building coming in you can see mm. all the way so that what was continue through and it's just little glimpses like that and start kind of yeah we're talking mm. about it as a, as a journey through building and I was going to talk about precedent studies actually. I think that's a really um, quite a useful contribution to stuff that you've seen that you like pictures of. So it's something where you normally do at the beginning of projects, just precedent studies to demonstrate what we're kind of thinking of and anything like that. But those precedents can be image based or they can anything be experience based. based. Yeah. You know, that's right. That's right. And then by your example, you know. Of, of running your show underneath the void, whatever it is, you know, this speak is a, is a, it's a kind of precedent in the sense that it was an experience, an emotional experience, I imagine, that you would want to share and replicate. So, sharpen your pencils. <laughs> and a practical note, can uh, anyone go to the scratch door and get loads of scratch <laughs> Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just anything, really. Some cardboard. Yeah. yeah. Cardboard boxes and pairs of scissors and sticky tape yeah. and things like that can be really yeah. useful. I mean, we, we, as I said, we've been around measuring and drawing um, yeah, up what we've got here, and we can just use that to yeah. just try and kind of realise. I mean, I think there's lots of things we can do. I mean, I, you know, I showed examples of you know, kind of like the drawing and the modelling, things like that. I think it would be really interesting also, and I don't know quite how it's going to work, would be to install, to use a space and dress it differently and create mm -hmm. something, you know, whether it be hanging something or whatever it is. And I don't know, that's got to come out of the discussions that we have, but, but you know, we can test some of those ideas of turning things on their head slightly and maybe using spaces slightly differently and, and just see how we feel about it in the first instance. And it's, it's always say it sort of starts in the heart and then it goes to the head as you, as you try to rationalise, intellectualise what you're doing. Um, and I think that, that, that would be another way of, 
of representing. So it is, you know, it's up to you as much as it is up to us, really. And do we have a projectionist for tomorrow? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've 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 got sort of um, <laughs> yes. Well, between one and two o'clock, we thought we just we just for relaxation, much anything else, we're just going to show a few very short architectural films, and it will be YouTube type stuff and things like that, which are kind of generally some are just image based, some tell the story about things. And um, we've invited, well, we've we've suggested to some of our students at Bath they might like to come over and from you as well. So we might get two, we might get twenty. I don't know. I absolutely don't know. But interesting enough, the students at Bath are actually designing a, 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 a cinema. Uh, so I said, so you sent you certain critics, you say, well, how many of you visit? Yeah, I go all the time. Multi oh, yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Get real, you know. You know come, come, come somewhere where it really works and sort of understand the real place. So, so it'll be interesting to see who, who turns up. But if it's Anna and I, it'll be still be fun, won't it? Yeah, yeah we don't mind. <laughs> but that's our lunchtime break. But no, for, for, yeah, we, we'll be here. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, okay. start downstairs and have a chat, decide how many, how many we've got, how we're going to, how we're going to do it, yeah. and, um, and move it from there. But I think, you know, is the, the kind of discovery element of the storyboard is, is what tomorrow is really about, and to start to record those experiences, the things you like, the things you like least, and the things you might want to change, and the things that we, you know... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of, I sort of think the brief is there, but I'm, I'm inclined to think we're sort of not step aside from that. But we're, we're sort of sitting in front of the brief, and, and the brief may need to meld to something else if, as a result of the next few days, you know, the, the, the focus or the opportunities change. The brief is broadly there. You know what you haven't got. Yeah, light being one. Uh, and you know, and that 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 might change it. I don't know, um, but um, you don't want to be driven by the brief in the first mm -hmm. couple of days. You mm -hmm. just you need to reopen the book and just um, get the, see what the contributions are, and just see how that then. How many people can actually make it during the day tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. I don't know if this is a dumb idea, but. Um, could we could we collect other people if if you ask you know if you, if you are going to use like simple questions to start with like what what do you like what do you want, what do you want to change could we do some of that by email just to get yeah. synchronous yeah, yeah. I mean there's no reason other people in the group yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean yeah. They're, they're, you, that'd be great I mean then you could take those snippets out of the email literally yeah. a pair of scissors and get them on the storyboard but so we could we could do just do we could do a kind of bit of live email and volunteers yeah. list mm -hmm. during the workshop and everyone. At their, at their offices, supposed to be working for employers. That would be really good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Getting them to yeah. work would be really good. Okay, that's true. And you're not yeah. in on Wednesday, right? But you're in Thursday. That's it, Thursday, yes. Thursday, Thursday to do a part two of, of That's it, one. that's it. And we'll see where we got to by Thursday. Yeah. I mean, we try. We tend to try to get to a point where we maybe got to start some commonality, some kind of focus, and then we might be working, we might we might start to split the building and have a group that sort of work on a particular area in the group and work on another. Maybe that's when installations might take place or, or, or slightly more uh, considered ideas, I don't know. I mean, it'd be mm -hmm. good to get to something like that. Um, you know, work the models a little bit more. I mean, I you saw the models earlier on, I kind of do like the scruffy models. I do like things that are made mm -hmm. in, in two minutes rather than two hours, you know. Because at the end of the day, yeah. You know, one of the biggest challenges I have to say, and it won't be the case here, is with the university, is that uh, young people today, one would say is not a young person, um, are welded to laptops and things like that, and and quite often don't handwrite, quite often don't even draw. And certainly when I did third year, when I ran the third year, I said no laptops. It's all you know, sketchbooks is what we're at, and it's, it is quite a struggle to get people to do that. But it means you can have a conversation, and two lines can represent that, or, or something can represent that in under five seconds, that that would otherwise need a couple of hours to, to model. So I kind of think it would be great to be able to do that, to, to, and hence the storyboard thing that we can all just go almost arbitrarily write things on it or, or draw things on it or photograph things and stick them on or emails, stick them on and stuff like that and start to get this kind of collective idea of, um, you know, that will generate the direction that we take, basically. Mm -hmm.
So it's quite exciting to start without an agenda, in some senses. It's quite exciting to see. I have actually no idea. I, mean, I might have an idea, but I'm going to part that and just see what comes out of it. I actually don't have an idea, to be honest. I can see all the challenges, levels and everything like that. I don't know what the answer is. Um, probably none of us do. But, um, you know, collectively, I think we can move towards something I think might work, we hope. Yeah. Levels are nightmare, aren't they? It's, yeah. I, I worked one night and the woman who used a wheelchair wanted to come in. I can't remember who else worked that evening, but um, she was really determined to be in here to see her friend perform, and fair enough. Yeah. And it was really challenging. How did you get her in? She was really up for it. So yeah. um, uh, she came in through the fire exit that we all come in through Down the, the bottom door. there. Down the corridor. Down the corridor, round the, round corner, the corner. And then lifted up in here. Yeah, and at home she she walks around on her knees and her hands. She was really happy to climb up the stairs to get up into here. Right. Um, using the loo was a nightmare, but she was so up for it. She wasn't, you know, she wasn't concerned about anything. But for us, it was quite hard. We really, yeah, yeah. you know. Prefer. But um, we talked about that bit today, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it was really, it was really. I mean, we've got, we, me, me and I've got a sort of moderate understanding of the history of this building and the things it's been, but I've got very, not much understanding of why it is the way it is, why there are so many levels, why decisions were made to bring you up and back down again and outside there and yeah. things like that. It's not, and aiming concrete as well, it's not entirely um, clear. Um, I mean, I can see why things, some of the things have happened. And I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but it's you know it, it's it, it's it's kind of the whole place is developed by this kind of process of organic growth, which is yeah. which is always going to happen. It's always going to happen, and, and and things are done almost in splendid isolation of the next move you might make. So we've got staircase eggs, we've got to get from there to there. We're going to do something else down here. We're going to get under that arch or whatever it is. We'll pull the stair back to there. And, you know, now's an opportunity to kind of hopefully start to rationalise some of those things. But yeah, that, the disabled access, or the level access, for whatever reason, um, is, is you know, one of the tougher ends of the challenge. And whether we'll resolve it or not, I don't know. We'll have to find out. I mean, we can, there are always mechanical means of doing that. Uh, but it's doing it in a way that makes it dignified and accessible. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the, yeah, one of the tough things we've got to sort out. Yeah. Is it? I can ask one question. <laughs> what? What amongst? I don't know. It doesn't need to be kind of um, an answer to this. But what is? What works least well beyond the levels at the access levels? What, what do most of you feel, or do you not feel there is something that is... What is the most challenging thing about this place? Because we, so, we see a huge amount of positivity, and we see a huge amount of things that work really great, really, really well. For me, it's the workspace. Mm. The doing, the, the, when we're not open to the public, yeah. it doesn't work. There's, for, even for meetings, it's not good for... Definitely for table-based work, it's no good. Yeah. And for doubling that up with the bar, so I feel I feel pretty strong. Yeah, yeah. It's that relationship because we don't have. And, and we have a lot of people who don't, you know, including myself, who won't, you know, will do our work for here from home. Yeah. So like, oh, I want to go in. <laughs> right. And that we're losing a lot of culture from that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the, I mean. The ultimate challenge from that challenge from an access point of view is whether you could have a volunteer here who does everything that volunteers does as someone who is in a wheelchair yeah. or or or, yeah. or has some kind of a disability. Yeah. Like, you know. Fox Soldier Museum, we just converted the barn, it's now their museum. Fox Soldier, you know what you all know, Fox Soldier. I mean you kinda of thinking this is a second Fox Soldier Museum. You're sat on top of it. All the old projectors underneath there and the stuff that's up there that probably hasn't, I don't know when it last operated, but I sit there thinking, God, you're gonna have, A, you can have an amazing car boot set, but also, <laughs> you know, you could, you found a space to get some of these things out and de rustified them and dusted them off. I mean, yeah, the it problem just, is it works better as an art installation, as it does. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. <laughs> it, is, it, it does up in there, it's yeah. amazing. But, yeah. I think, and I think part, so there's the chaos, and, and yeah. whilst part, so for me, we say, what's the one thing that doesn't work? The single most common cause of complaint for me when I come in and find myself shouting at the walls 
is because something I need to run something that night has disappeared. Mm. And that is part of that is because of the chaos and the amount of stuff that's here. So much of it is here and, and it, kind of everything has a purpose in a way, but there might be one of them in this place. And if, you, if it's not where it normally is, you can't find it. But to impose chaos on that too much would completely change the heart of the place. Yeah. So it's my single biggest frustration, but it's also the thing that I laugh about of you the most, yeah. which is like, well, of course that wouldn't be here. Yeah. Why would that be here? The only, only the thing we yeah. need. Yeah. And, and so I would be wary about trying to... You don't want to sanitise it. Yeah. You don't want to sanitise it. I mean, there's a kind of cultural mm. thing here, isn't there? I mean, yeah. It is about you and you and you and you and you and, and the different ways you do things and the way that you kind of almost almost share autonomously but yet collectively work as a whole you know and it's 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 a lot of individuals as, as one organization but it's still a lot of individuals as as separate operating units in a way yeah yeah and i think, I think the stuff sometimes feels like well to me it feels like treasure but like everyone's saying you you can't use it so that if there were six projectors that could possibly work or whatever then there are so many creative people here that someone would come in and say i'm going to use those bloody six projectors and do an installation in the toilets or something yeah, yeah. but because we don't know where they are or only one person knows where they are or maybe we're too scared to ask to use them or one bit's missing it's like it's like this huge resource that isn't accessible to us because it's too disparate or somehow yeah. something like that that yeah. room there is like a glacier <laughs> <laughs> my, my mate he put his sax stand down and he just he just went <laughs> and I said it'll give it three months it, it'll basically it gets kind of pushed out the snout again and that's exactly what happened it just reappeared mm. I mean stuff you know it's like this building is like one big fucking where's wallet <laughs> <laughs> everything is here when you lose something mm. it's only gone 50 centimeters yeah. but you just cannot find it <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant that, uh, wading over wading over it literally like this <laughs> table, mm. stepping across guitars and uh, violins and goodness knows what else yeah yeah that's yeah not dissimilar underneath there, actually. Mm -hmm. I've been down there for a while. I don't know. I think well, underneath there, the void kind of looked to, to me as though there was a bit of intent when it was first used. There were a couple of cupboards built at the back that looked like they were kind of fireproof and then uh, stuff was supposed to go in there. And mm -hmm. I don't know what's in there now. Didn't open them. I mean, I'm a hoarder, yeah, but when I come in here, I become minimalist. <laughs> 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 you know, every man has his limits. <laughs> I think for the public, maybe one of the things that's most frustrating for them is the temperature problem. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's barely ever a good temperature. It's really too cold in winter and it's really problematic in the hot in summer in the auditorium. Yeah. So I'm guessing, I mean, the seats are uncomfortable, but you know, I don't think that that bothers people that much. I think nobody likes that, that it's too cold or too hot. Whereas people do like the office for, for how it is, yeah. for, for different reasons, and, and people do like the chaos as well for, yeah. for certain reasons. But temper the temperature thing is just like horrible for yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I can feel yeah. that standing here. I can feel the I can feel the draft. We were in the draft area. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The ghost. Yeah. 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 We can have everything perfect, really great event, and everything right, and then it's too hot, too cold, and it's, and it's not a good event. So. Sometimes yeah. we'd start off with the curtains shut, <laughs> and then walk in, and the curtains open, and then you know it's like a kind of poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> the temperature drops <laughs> ten centigrade, <laughs> and like all the kind of seed girls are delighted, you know, in Kingsdown. <laughs> so there's this enormous kind of heat source. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't got an answer to that right now, but um, uh, yeah, we're very much aware of that. Another thing that I'd say about um, public space is that, like, we've got like a 105 seat auditorium, but not all events are kind of auditorium based, but you kind of go in and out and sometimes it's shut. There's not actually enough, imagine it's pissing down rain outside, there's not enough public space right. for those people to comfortably. Off the in, a, in, a, in the bar or lounge area and it's it's just I think there needs to be like a concession to comfort yeah audience comfort outside of the auditorium yeah mm. yeah mm. 
Yeah. In terms of your Make it nice. about what doesn't work the most about it, I think it's for me as well. It's the kind of lack of decent sort of seating. I mean, this this well, this, this the auditorium in a way, in the relationship the projection room to the, the screen and the, the scenery area to the stage and stuff like that is really good. Yeah, and really works, you know. And uh, any improvements there might just be technical ones that, that the public won't even notice or yeah. people here won't notice. But sometimes once you get outside, it's almost like that's a separate building away from me than, than this bit. Two bits of this bit, and then there's kind of the stuff outside the, the lounge, the relationship with the lounge and the bar and all that. It's just, it's you know, it felt massive in the early days. We were doing events when no one came, and um, you know, we still do. But, but like Lena's saying, you know, it's the, the public get a short deal in there in a way. And you think the, the, the staff have got this massive office underneath, and this massive zone and stuff. The staff have got these huge big areas, but the public are really boxed into those two rooms. Yeah. What's, what's really noticeable actually is when we do a game tonight, we mostly have that in the lounge we put the tables and seats and stuff and it really changes the atmosphere and it's really warm out there and it makes it really inviting. Does it? Mm -hmm. And people yeah. stay for ages. One of our games tonight ended up at like one o'clock in the morning because people just didn't want to leave. Um, but it really changes it. It's really so nice. you've got chairs and tables just outside this door? Yeah, yeah and, and down onto the bar space. Like in every so little space, it's yeah, quite crowded, right. but there's just loads of chairs and loads of kind of everywhere, and people just yeah, come out. But I mean, it reduces capacity to yeah. you know, yeah, 30 yeah. people, but it's yeah. really, it suddenly yeah. becomes cozy. Very intimate, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, Hoggy was talking earlier about um, the plan, plan that he came out with of, of having uh, the uh, the garden is sort of integrated into into the, into the lounge, wasn't that the yeah. idea? Um, so that so that it it become it, you have a glass glass roof over the over the over it, the presumably over the, the garden the garden is quite well used, is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's pretty good light actually. It's quite hot. Does it? Yeah, that that that's a wall and that wall that wall and that wall get. Because it is your biggest sun. space. I mean, you treat yeah. it as a room. It's your biggest yeah. space. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. It's different this space but yeah no, that's quite interesting yeah yeah i think the other thing that sometimes works well and sometimes doesn't work quite so well is the sort of pit that we have here because it's such an intimate room and yet sometimes you want it to be more intimate because there's always this gap here and then other times when the very few occasions that we do have people get up out of the seats and dance here it's, it's so lovely, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. um but it would be really nice to somehow find some way to be able to to be able to remove this this gap when you didn't want it. Mm. But I, I mean mm. you know Re say it. say again remove it or make it bigger? Or make no remove stage it. Stage bigger. Uh, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Make the stage bigger but, but remove the gap between the seats. Sometimes it feels like there's a sometimes it feels like there's a gap between the audience and the yeah. performer. Um, even though it is an intimate space, it might some performers do close that gap themselves. Yeah, yeah, they, they, do, yeah. Mm. they come up here. Yeah. Yeah. People have played okay. in there, or they've had like there's been musicians and people who've invited the audience to sit on the stage instead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah those times been lovely, and that's been yeah. great. Well, sometimes people have closed yeah. the curtains and just sat yeah. performed in front of them there and done away with the stage altogether. Yeah. But there used to be a thing here, didn't there? This black curve on the floor represents where there used to be like a the stage used to be. The thrust stage. Yeah, yeah. Like we, we know from photographic records and stuff that the, the stage used to be a curve, so people could put their feet up like that on the stage. <laughs> that's something that we could have a modular bit that comes yeah, out that's on the side and gets set up, sort of thing. But that means performers could come down. That's what people want, you know, it's an option. You know, it's optional. Yeah. When we put films yeah. on for volunteers, we bring the well, <laughs> let's bring the cubes in so we can put our feet up. That's oh, right, like okay. VIP seats. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as it gets, yeah. That's good. That's yeah, inside outside space is quite interesting. You know, doing, you, making more use. I mean, that is one thing, the outside space there. And, and of course, you know, we mentioned it once here, it's the secret garden on the other side, mm. on the south side. Mm. That would be good to find. Would be really good. Who doesn't want that anymore? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So it's the bottom of someone's garden, is what we... Yeah, yeah, it's number three, three. Yeah. number three, oh, King's Square. Is, is it? it? Yeah. Yeah, it's number three. I mean, I, got, I did a land registry check, so I got the, the, the details of the owner of that, built, of that right. flat or the building, so I could try and approach them. I tried actually calling around a couple of times, but no one answers. Uh, okay. Uh, it's like, like a long time of day, but... I mean, when I've been across that roof, I've heard music playing as if someone's in there. Yeah. It's just kind of weird, slightly weird vibe about it. The door's always open, there's kind of beer cans on the floor and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so we could follow that up and try and, yeah. Oh, it just gives you another edge, that's all, yeah. then, which is kind of, you know, the one level is light ventilation as much as you yeah. want or as well as you want it, but it's a, just sort of an outside escape space as a sort of a little, almost a refuge, this kind of little found garden at the mm. back there. Yeah. yeah. Could be really nice. And when it's really, really hot in the projection room, you open the door and stand on next door. On the roof? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's nice yeah. I hope about that, yeah. <laughs> And actually, it's sometimes not essential because it gets so hot. <laughs> I think I think it's quite important that the all these things that we're saying, like uh, having a performance in the void or or using using all these spaces in unexpected ways, are things that you don't really plan for. It's more about the use. You use what you've got. Yeah, or you abuse what you you sort of repurpose it. Yeah. Which which is kind of strange to come in and think it's blank and we can do anything. Well, that's kind of where we are. And I mean, the, the office thing earlier on, I mean, I'm not saying seeds of ideas, but I, mean, I just thought, actually, if you could even, I mean, maybe there's a case of kind of dispersing the office function or the, mm. to around the, the building as a whole, so there are other places you can go to to do certain, some mm. things. Mm. Mm. So you don't have to all be in one space. Not there's nothing mm. wrong with all be in one space, but there's going to be the same space for everything you do. Mm. And that, that kind of dispersal might work with other people. I was going to say, I'm sure early on someone, I can't, it's a really long time ago now, said something about using the space there for some sort of office space or yeah. maybe using it for some sort of, like, because at the moment it's, it's sort of came for being storage and various other things, and sometimes you want to use it for acting as an artist. Yeah. And they can't really, yeah. there's loads of stuff there. But we've had a few events, or one event comes to mind where we actually use, I think it was, one of Chiz's events where we mm -hmm. yeah, right, yeah, yeah, and it's really nice. We have like, a little, mm -hmm. little bar in there, and yeah. actually oh, okay. just changing the space. It looks so much bigger when you can kind of be there. So, what, how did you use that with the stage space as well, or something stage like that? Well, the stage oh, space became a dance floor, and the yeah. performer was on. Um, performer on a platform out here. So, so this was covered with lights and the performance there, yeah. The staff entrance, the whole building was turned around and it was great because the public, people, people were really lost. Yeah. <laughs> so they into there because they would, they would channel, uh, channel down the corridor and I think they up went the stairs. They went up the stairs at the end, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. they went up the stairs. Straight across the stage. And the curtains shut so when they came on stage they... Just at the right yeah, moment. The room and, then, and they were really lost. The main, they were the like, that's amazing though, isn't it? I mean, that's fantastic. It's like they're in a completely new place. Yeah. 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 That's, that it's was a great space. I mean, it's yeah. a great volume, isn't it? Yeah. It used I mean, to be green room, I think. Things, but it, it's Back in the theory. It's got a really it's nice... It's the scenery room. area, I think. It's, yeah, it's the scenery area. I think some of those big windows and stuff would have been when they got... Somehow got scenery in and out of the space. I don't know. Before the fire, when the entrance was through the restaurant and it was this long thing, there was there was an effect there and that you kind of people just didn't know where this was; they couldn't work out. No, that's which was which was quite a good that thing historically. That, was that lost. kind of journey into the abyss it, it, it's actually quite interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know, this this is kind of this thing in what we sort of magical, you know, cinema yeah. thing of well, entering another world. depth of privacy you know, within the building, how you actually journey into a space, mm -hmm. the deeper you get into it, the more private, specific it is. And it can be lived and it can be And that, that journey that people had through to that place, they don't yeah. need to know where they are. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you do give gentle clues to orientate if it's appropriate. I don't think it needs to be yeah. the case here. But no, going back to that space though, I mean, if you think of the kind of the whole, the whole model form of this range of buildings, where can you go? You can't go that way, you can't go there. All the surfaces, mm -hmm. you know, can you go down, can you go out, can you go up? Yeah, maybe you can go up, maybe you can go, yeah, maybe you go there. But all, yeah, there's, there are places that you can, maybe you go out into the garden, or into the yard, mm -hmm. or, and sort of repurpose that, or find some other means of, of populating that. Mm -hmm. And the constraints that we have, we, we kind of pretty much know about. Mm -hmm. Some we can scoop out and undo, and some we, we continue to live with.
there's, yeah. there's another constraint kind of here at the moment. Yeah, that's going to say. Yeah, it's noise from outside. Yeah. yeah. So it's very difficult at the moment to actually have two events at the same time or have different things. Or even just people talking in the bowl and the yeah. 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 Some sofa so, thing would be good. Yeah. And just a, yeah, it does answer my own question. I can hear that person's gone down there. It's now on the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, yeah. and um, could you call it for the um, uh, insulation? For that, yeah. Sound or acoustic insulation? Well, well, the well, like if both, if, if, if you yeah. get both, yeah. that would be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, we know that it's very poorly insulated in both those areas, so anything you do in a way is going to yeah. could improve those things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's sort of thing we saw. I mean, we were, when we were poking around in here earlier on, I was kind of looking at this scene, and thinking it'd be really interesting. I mean, we did see a bit of a look at the it was. It did look like a long form, didn't it? Was it over there? Uh, just outside the door there, that, looking up, yeah. There, yeah. And, and you know, knowing what it was, the hall, the kind of like the yeah. Victorian hall, you're kind of thinking, that is all up there somewhere, yeah. still with a lantern yeah. and, and, and yeah, no. the like. Not that you necessarily want to go back to that form, so yeah, it's a kind of yeah. acoustic thing. This yeah. is serving a nominal, instantive yeah. um, uh, purpose, uh, as well as acoustic. But it would be interesting to just to explore what the yeah. implications are of doing something. If, yeah. if we're dealing with, you know, if we're dealing with thermal, you know, if we're dealing with heat loss and things like that, or, or temperature control, then we're obviously dealing with envelope, and we yeah. have to think about what happens up there. Yeah. And you know, we were actually talking about it a couple of days ago, and I was thinking, well, what can you do with these? Assuming they're not asbestos, and they probably are. But do you know? That? Definitely are. No. Yeah, some extent you can make them flat, you can chop yeah. them up, make acoustic yeah. things out of them, you could re, you know, use them again in yeah. some other sort of form, or I don't know. They, those are kind of the things that I think <laughs> 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 we could bomb burnable. Yeah, that's, that's but uh, that's why I'm sort of thinking we want to try and yeah. talk about it uh, maybe over the next few days. But I think, as I said, if we start well out of the box and just see. What, what would be the most radical thing? Yeah, money's no, rest, no restraint. I mean, here's a, here's, a, okay, here's a question. What would be the most radical thing that you think we could do here? Remove the screen. To make it <laughs> you know, yeah. someone's won the Remove the screen. Remove the screen. Remove it. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. Could we ask any questions about, about what was discussed earlier? That there's some email questions that are going to go out. We can do, but end literally in four. Well, we could. We can ask them the questions. Just have a thread on the list that if you wanted to make the most random. Yeah, that everyone can. Yes. What would you make? What would you do? And what do you think is the thing that works least well? What is the greatest challenge that the cube has? And, yeah, we could get everything from the colour of the carpets to the, you know, the light, whatever. You know. I think we could ask a few questions like that. You want yeah. to ask in the negative and ask in the positive, really. Mm -hmm. You know, look at look at what work learns least well, and look at what you most might like to change. And I think that you know, just see what comes out of that, because I think there could be stuff that might gently change the way we think about things. Yeah. We're going to start five minutes later. Right. So I need to take the